Hey, what's going on, YouTubers and Microgrinders? Alton back with episode two of our Jackpot Poker series. So in episode one, I talked about what Jackpot Poker is, how it works, and some basic strategies, as well as how well I've been doing so far in my early career of trying these out. Now, before I start playing, I do want to preface it with a cautionary note that I am not a sit-and-go specialist. I am a, not a hyper-turbo specialist. I'm a six max cash game specialist at the micro stakes. So these games are a lot different than that. And so you'll notice that I may be making mistakes here and there, but that's okay. I'm learning. And my main goal in this is to make a lot less mistakes than my opponents. And when I make a lot less mistakes than them, I make money. Um, now, one thing I do want to note is that these games are pretty darn soft. So you're going to see a lot of crazy play. Um, but let's go ahead and let's get into it. So I am going to try to load up a couple games and let me bring over the lobby. You'll notice that it tells you approximately how long the games run. Right now, I don't think there's that many people playing because these usually only run around six or seven minutes. So we're going to register for a couple of them and see if we can get on a couple of them. And one's already loading up, so that's good news. And you'll notice that's doing its little spin and... Hey, we're playing for four bucks, so the lowest amount you can play for. Um, I have my range sheet right here, and I'm going to pull it over in the other screen, and we'll pretty much be following that. So this is a fishy type of stuff you need to watch out for. So um, OMG, it's Brett, just jams the first hand. I potentially could call with Ace-5 off, but I don't know anything about him yet, so I'm going to be on the watch out for that. If he jams his hand, I'm actually call with Ace-10 off. Yeah, I'm just going to jam over the top because I think he's just spazzing out. It's only two bucks anyway, so why not? Now he has pocket nines. We got a race, so. And we end up getting lucky. He's drawing to a nine, and voila, we win. So he wasn't really spazzing out that much, um, but we got lucky. Here I'm just going to bet half pot. A lot of times I'll just do a one and done C bet, especially on a dry board texture like this, where either he has a queen or a deuce or he doesn't. And this is just an easy, I'm just going to call because I want him to come along. Um, we want to try to bust him out of the tournament. It's always nice when you flop the straight draw. I'm going to bet 30 because there's a diamond draw there, but I'm going to bet a small amount. Uh, he's drawing to a diamond. I wouldn't be surprised if he hits the diamond or a four. Oh, well, nope, he's gone. Okay, so one player down, so we're halfway there. Here, we're not going to raise. There's no point in raising. I'm just going to check, try to see a flop. Uh, you have to remember that we're playing with such a small amount of chips that we can't get too crazy. And when you're playing these games, a lot of it really is about survival more than anything else. Um, and just trying to make it to the end and also not let your chips to dwindle down. Uh, I'm tempted to fire a C-bet here. I am going to do a half pot C-bet. Pretty dry board texture, either has an ace or not. A queen is a good card for us. I am going to check the turn because if he has an ace, then that prevents him from uh, getting value from me. And I think I have the best hand a majority of the time here. And I'm going to go for a very small value bet. And he calls, and I'm pretty sure we take it down. Yep, works out. So we are by no means doing amazingly great here. Yeah, we do have a massive chip lead. This guy's a fish. Um, here, again, I'm just gonna check, try to hit the cards on the board, try to make a hand, and if I don't, then I didn't risk any money because the big blind money isn't mine. Here we pick up a little wimpy, tiny, nine high flush draw. It does check to me, I am gonna bet. Half pot size bet. You'll notice that my bet sizing is a bit smaller than standard in these because the stack sizes are smaller, so I don't want to risk as much than if I was playing 100 big blind stacks on a cash game. And when he goes all in here, I'm just folding. The guy's playing a 50 slash throw game. So 10 jack off, definitely not worth risking uh, roughly 300 chips, which is round at the time. It was something like 17 or 16 big blinds. So one thing you have to do in these games is bet fold a lot against um, lose passive opponents that aren't aggressive. A queen three off, I'm just folding. It's just not strong enough to raise on the button. And 
And so anytime this guy raises, then I'm going to be on the lookout for him having a strong hand uh, since he's playing a 50 slash 14 game. So when he's just jamming like this, it's just an easy fold. Just pick your spots. Don't get overly aggressive and just want to snap call people off. It's all right if he starts to accumulate a few chips. Again, this is a game of smarts and wits and survival, not getting impatient and doing crazy things. Yeah, I did snap off or I mean, I sorry, um, I re-raised all in against this guy over here because he looked like he was a spaz, but I ended up getting in a coin flip situation where um, I was actually got pretty lucky, to be honest, because I thought he was spazzing out and he actually had a decent hand. Not a good flop for us, unfortunately. I'm just going to check. Yeah, we do have the ace at the back door. If I picked up some equity on the turn, I would probably bet, but I think ace high is probably good a decent amount of the time against him. But when he bets... Again, lose passive opponent. I'm just folding. Um, let's take a look at these other opponents. We have 67, 17, and 83, 13. So this is what I'm telling you about. Got to pay attention to your opponents and be on the lookout of really how bad that they are. Queen nine off, just an easy fold. So it looks like he's just starting to jam all in um, a lot of the hands from the button, which is fine. We'll just wait for a good hand and snap him off with a pretty decent hand. But until then, we're just going to be patient since we still have roughly a 2 to 1 chip lead. I'm going to bet half pot on here since we do have the back door nut flush draw. Against his opponent jamming in 18 big blinds, we're just folding with 19 big blinds. Our hand is definitely not strong enough. And here I'm not going to raise. I'm just going to try to make a hand on the flop. And if not, then, you know, we won't play too crazy. Here we do pick up the nut flush draw. We have an overcard for the ace, so it's worth a bet when he is just checking and showing that he's passive and there's a lot of dead money in the pot. This guy's kind of slow, kind of like he wants the blinds to go up. So at this point in time, I'm just going to go all in. He only has 10 big blinds left. Just put him to the test, and he's got three outs to win. So if he gets lucky, then go for him. If not, we win the tournament. And we take down the first one, so that's always good. Um, this tournament looks like it might go a while, but that's all right. Took down the first one, so we're at eight minutes. I don't want this to go too long, so... Let's just make this baby full screen, and let's see if we can take down and go two for two. Um, but I'm happy just winning one as it is. I've had a pretty good day so far. Uh, against his opponent, I'm just going to put him all in. He only has nine big blinds left. Could be stealing with a wide range. Seven five suited, just folding. Pretty junky. So if you do start to play these and you haven't played them, just understand that variance is going to play a huge role, especially short-term variance, um, because a lot of your play is based upon all-in situations. So you're going to get in a lot of situations where your equity favorite is going to be, you know, your your favorite to win the hand as an equity favorite is going to be very minimal. It may be something like a 60 to 40 um, equity favorite. So you have to understand in the long run that's profitable, but over the short run, over a session, two sessions, three sessions, like you may lose several in a row where you're a clear favorite. Um, that's just part of this game. We have short stacked here. I have 15 big blinds, so I'm just going to min raise. I was tempted just to jam, but I think I have a little too many chips to jam all in. And 
and that that's kind of like my situation earlier today. Um, I got all in with the best hand, like five or six tournaments in a row, and people just kept sucking out. And here I'm just gonna rejam all in. This may actually be the last hand of the tournament if this guy decides to call. Oh, we get in with the best hand, so this is a situation. If he spikes an ace, good for him. But again, coin flip situation, we got in with the best hand. That's really all that matters. So perfect situation to illustrate what I was talking about. 10 big blinds, we're going to be jamming all in. Perfect hand, somebody call it off, please. Come on, big bad wolf. Best hand again, see if we can win. Oh, he has lots of outs, oop, and he just won. So that's exactly what I'm talking about. Just be happy you got in with the best hand. This guy called me with a 9-8 suited. So, you know, it is what it is. And that's going to go ahead and conclude this video. So we're at 11 minutes. Um, I was hoping to run a couple tournaments. I don't want to keep these videos too long to lose your attention. But the fact that I won one out of two, and when I did get busted out of this tournament, um, each time I got all in with the best hand, that's all that we can hope for. And so, again, so long as we are getting in with the best hand, long term, that's a profitable move. And that's all that we can hope for. So if you have any questions about jackpot poker or where you can find this little nifty range chart that I got, let me know. Um, but simply if you go to google.com and just do a search for poker strategy, sit and go, um, not sit and go, um, spin and go strategy, then you'll find it there. Because if you look for jackpot poker, nothing's going to come up. But the games are pretty much ideal games and they're the same. So, ooh, and look at this guy. This guy just won again. So he didn't play that well, and he won the tournament. So good for him. Anyways, this is Alton from microgrinder.com. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you at the next video.